All right. So um, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about um, a problem that we've, well, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a problem that we deal with a lot of Islam media just in terms of um, we have a lot of clients that have websites that were built using um, various themes and, uh, and specifically page builders. So when I say page builders here, what I'm talking about are um, the types of page builders that are drag and drop page builders. Uh, and they're, um, they're really, really common and really popular because they're very easy to, to sort of set up and um, get started using and everything. And, and you can do it without using any code. So, Examples would be Divi, um, Page Builder, Elementor, Muffin Builder. Uh, there's actually quite a few of them. Sometimes they're uh, what we call white labeled, meaning that uh, it's it's not it's technically Divi or it's technically Elementor, but it's been renamed to match whatever the theme is and, and sort of that. So it it just takes the place of the built-in content editor and. Um, um, you will use this to create your layout on your website instead of just the regular content editor. So uh, what's not to love about that? Everyone wants it to be easier to work on their website and easier for uh, the website to be put together. Well, the first biggest issue, in my opinion, is that they're actually deceptively complicated. We've We've only had a couple of clients, I think, who are actually um, very skilled at using these and changing their websites. And honestly, even here, uh, as a developer, you know, and I've been doing this, I've been doing development for a really long time, even I kind of cringe a little bit when I have to try to figure out how some layouts are done using uh, Divi or um, Elementor. Some of them are worse than others, but uh, they can kind of look like, um, um, I'm well, there just can be very, very complicated uh, things. So this right here is what a thank you page looks like in there, which, you know, for us, it's, it's literally just uh, a single content editor. Um, for them, they have to like, you know, add or you have to add an entire layer first, and then you have to add a row to it, and then you have to add a column to it, and then you have to add the text to it. And it's, it can get really frustrating really fast. Um, this is WP Bakery. And again, you can see that there's just kind of a lot of options. And when you're trying to be everything for everyone and you know, sort through all, and I'm, I'm not even really sure what some of uh, these options will even look like. So until I try it, I don't know if it's exactly what it is that I'm looking for. And then it gets more complicated when you start adding in, you know, customized widgets to this and, and they advertise it as being very flexible, but really what it feels like is it's, it's a lot. It's just a lot to do and, and I'm not really sure how this is going to come out. Uh, this is the next, I think, biggest problem. You'll need to pay for updates meaning licensing, or you're going to have to pay somebody to fix it when it breaks. So this is a few of the most popular page builders and their annual licensing fee. The, you know, on the low end, you know, you have something like Elementor and it's $49 a year. It's really not that big of a deal. It's, you know, pretty nominal fee. The problem is that you don't realize that you have to pay this and it's, you know, not something that usually you're being warned about by uh, the, the company that builds your website. You just get it and your pages are put together and you know, there's not necessarily any, any warning that, oh, by the way, if you don't update this, you know, or if you don't get the uh, license to update this, then there could be other issues further down the line. So I'm just gonna click through this real quick. These are three uh, info, um, head, headline graphics that I found. All I did was look for security vulnerability in 
a page builder. And this is all from this year. There were just tons of errors uh, in, in pretty much every page builder, actually. Uh, I just found three of them. I just thought it was funny that uh, it was so easy to find. Um, but yeah, they regularly have security vulnerabilities and it's actually a, a pretty serious ongoing issue. Um, so even without that, if you do have the, the license and everything and you go and you update it, it can still break your site. It can still cause issues. So here's an example of uh, what ends up happening. You end up seeing this instead, uh, which is, um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bunch of short code, but you can understand it'd be really frustrating. You'd be like, what's this? Um, this is a, an example of an email being sent to somebody because um, one of the uh, composer uh, plugins isn't working right. Uh, <laughs> this, this one was really funny to me because it was a, a person trying to demonstrate in a help forum why something wasn't working correctly in Divi. And uh, again, I'm a developer and I'm not even sure what he was trying to tell us <laughs> because it was uh, so messed up. It was uh, very confusing. But this, I think, this is one of those hidden issues right here that um, I think a lot of people don't really consider when they're having their website built in the first place that you don't realize that this is, that there are so many different ways to build a website and some of them are just flat out worse than others. If, if you use one of these page builders to, to build your site, um, they can slow down your site pretty significantly. It's, there's a, obviously a, um, a range of you know how how bad this can be or how much it can affect you but uh you just you know, well I'll, I'll show you actually <laughs> so I, I went to a client website i went to their thank you page it's a thank you page with two lines of text and this is that uh page speed score on uh, pingdom which is just a tool that we use sometimes to look for um, you know, whether or not a page is efficient. You can see the page size is actually pretty, pretty small. It's less than a, a megabyte, which is good. Uh, it's not actually that big, but that little corner down there where it says requests, that refers really specifically to um, how many times your browser has to ask for a file from the website. So, it's it's going back and it's asking um, it's asking for let's say you know a font file or it's asking for a style sheet or uh, images or or something along those lines and for a simple thank you page which really should be you know it's got the header and the footer and and maybe a couple of images or something it shouldn't need to ask for 58 different things that's actually on the low end of things that we're doing but uh it reflects a deeper problem with page builders which is that they often insert uh scripts and styles and images that you don't actually need that you're not actively using on the page uh and it's creating a lot more code in general uh so in this case this this particular site is actually hosted, um, it, was, it was hosted in a pretty uh, good host, like a, a place that I have confidence in, and it still came back at uh, 1.15 seconds. And again, I just want to reiterate, this is text that we're talking about. This was my thank you page. Now, I have 1.2 megabytes worth of stuff on this page, and it's, it's a lot because of some images that I had on the page, but you'll see uh, there's 36 requests. I'm still including files whenever I build a website. I'm still including some scripts and images and so on, but the load time is significantly less. And uh, it's, it's just because if you look at the actual amount of code, it's, it's asking for fewer things from the server, but also it is creating a much smaller file uh, for the HTML part of it to actually load. So fewer requests are actually really important and it can add up really quickly. But um, 
there is a, a, a thing that I can't really show you here. These are not the only kinds of requests that go into a site's load time. A more, so there's, there's basically like your browser saying, okay, I can't show this font unless I download this font file or I can't, you know, um, I can't like show the right styles unless I download the style sheet or, or whatever. But also there is the, uh, the website on the server side, like, you know, where, where all the files themselves live next to the database. And the files, in order to generate all that HTML, have to actually go to the database server and say, I need this, and now I need this, and I need this, and I need this, and I need this. And uh, after a while, those constant, constant questions and requests to um, the database add up. And it becomes, you know, it, it takes you from half a second to, you know, a few seconds. Depends on how bad it is. And page builders are notoriously bad at doing that. They have a tendency to slow down the server, you know? So that's a kind of an invisible thing that you can't see by me showing you this, except for that, you know, there's the front requests, you know, the scripts and everything. And then there's the back requests, the one to the database to get all the information. And uh, it, it can make a pretty big difference. So this is an example of the code. And you don't need to worry about, you know, <laughs> like what this code means exactly, but you can see it's just, it's very, very lengthy. I, I ended up counting it in, in the source and it was like 57 lines of code to do their thank you page, 57 lines of code. And you can see there's only, there's, there's two, uh, two lines there that a human would actually read, which is thank you for your consultation request. Uh, so, you know, sort of in the middle. Um, so this is what it looks like for that, that one thank you page. This is mine. This is what Oozle does. Uh, it turns into, uh, I think it ended up being 11 lines, something like that. Uh, and when I talk about how many lines, I'm, I'm talking about something a little different than what you're seeing on the screen. But I, I think you kind of get the idea here that uh, what we're doing puts out a lot less code to the website. And it can cause a, a pretty serious issue, you know, when you when you have a lot of it, because not only is the the HTML that's generated here, you know, a lot less busy. There's a lot less of it, but also um, it's um, uh, fewer calls to the database. Just sorry, this is a I'm I'm a developer, so I know I'm getting into some details that that might not be very meaningful for some people but um i think you can kind of see the difference pretty clearly here and just so that i wanted to be really really clear that i wasn't you know exaggerating the difference here this is the thank you page that i was running this test on so two lines of code uh, you know it really should just be two lines of uh, you know readable text and this is the one that I tested. So it actually has significantly more information on it. And it should have, I mean, you would just think logically it would take up more space, you know, to, to put out this much information comparatively. But, uh, but nope, when you get a page builder, it just adds in a whole bunch of stuff. It drives me crazy as a developer because it also is, you know, an extra 15 places where something can break. For the stuff that, that Oozle Media does, we, uh, we have maybe three places where something can break, you know, which <laughs> makes it sound like it breaks all the time. It's a, uh, but it does. It's the thing <laughs> with these page builders. It, it really, really does. And we've had lots of very frustrated clients and uh, honestly, you know, uh, marketers, digital marketers who struggle to, um, to use these, these tools. And, uh, and this is, I think, the final and most important aspect to this, the thing that matters the most. They're not optimized for leads. The layouts that you're going to get when you get a page builder or when you buy a theme off of Theme Forest, uh, they're not meant to convert for you. 
they're meant to look pretty. They're meant to have neat effects like, you know, fade in text or images that slide in from off screen or, or something like that. And those things don't convert. They're actually uh, frustrating and noisy for users. So when, when I say that they're not optimized for leads, what I mean is that um, because they're trying to be everything to everyone, you know, Divi is, is trying to build a page builder that anyone can use. They don't care if you're a school, they don't care if you're, you know, um, a salon or, or a dentist, they don't care about anything. They just care about whether or not uh, it looks pretty. And that's what the developers have in mind when they build it. So, the reason that we have the layouts that we do and the reason we have the page builder that we do which is a proprietary custom one that i've put together over years um we've done a lot of cro research basically figuring out exactly uh what it is that people are clicking on what they expect to see when they uh, land on the website and um, how they're interacting with elements on the page we we did the same thing that a lot of web designers do now um, several years ago and we were building pretty sites like very very pretty actually and I, I was you know very proud of them and then we went to go look and see how people were actually interacting with these pages and we found out that um, that there were definitely ways that we could improve our, our layouts so we have years of research into CRO which is um, conversion rate optimization and uh, and then I started getting a lot of feedback from, um, from co-workers, from uh, our clients, from anyone who ever had to use this page builder, you know, and, and what their experience was like and what they expected to see when they were working on the website. So if I have a client, you know, give me feedback that training was difficult because this thing doesn't make sense or that thing doesn't make sense to them, then I start updating it. I start improving it. And especially if I hear that from several clients. So it's been several years of sort of refining that and, and making it easy to use. Um, page builders tend to be built by programmers and they don't necessarily think the way that an end user does. That's part of the reason why it can be so frustrating. We um, are putting together a, a much more coherent you know, or cohesive picture of this that we're going to be sharing in probably a future blog uh, or a future webinar. But uh, we've done the math on our results and they pay for themselves. Getting a site with Oozle Media is actually probably the, one of the best places that you can put your money in terms of getting a website because it, they just flat out get better results than the most of this. And, and if you do go with, um, other developers a lot of the time especially if they're wordpress what they're really doing is taking a page builder or they're taking a theme and they're modifying it a little bit to match your brand um or to match you know how you want the site to look and that can cause kind of a ton of issues one of them is that you have to deal with page builders the other one is that they're still not optimizing for you know uh conversions they're not optimizing for um you know how people actually use the website so we have this very very custom uh procedure and and uh website layouts that are um custom to us and you know we've done the homework on them and we're very confident in saying that that uh it's it's worth it to invest in that so part of the reason why we're good at that is because we're not trying to be everything to everyone we're not trying to you know make sure that you know a, a completely different kind of client can build something using our websites you know we're looking specifically at you know people within uh our verticals you know the the industries that we're specifically working with we're trying to make sure that the product that we're offering you is um, specifically tailored to you and your industry. And there's not really um, any uh, competition for that. You know, once you, uh, 
we're the experts in in this field in my opinion so uh yeah so that's uh that's the end of it that's <laughs> that's where um uh where i landed with everything so i just wanted to see if anyone had any questions or um let me see if sorry like i said i'm kind of new to this so i'm kind of poking around here looking for the actual um sorry guys i'm looking for uh uh the the, the comment screen here <laughs> All right, well, um, if we don't have any questions right now, then um, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. This um, webinar is going to be available. Oh, hang on just a second. <laughs> All right, sorry, Stephanie, I uh, didn't see what you were asking. Um, so I, I, I wanna answer a, a question here what a proven layout is the the proven layout is uh oozle media's website offering that is you know based on all of this research and everything they're uh very very customizable to to match um whatever client branding or uh you know whatever um whatever colors and fonts and and styles and, and everything that match your brand uh, but they retain a sort of core of um, uh, the the specifically CRO friendly layout. So uh, I I think that's uh, that answers uh, your question, Stephanie. It's our primary offering. It's the um, the the website package that is backed by just years of data. Okay, well, uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and end this webinar. Thank you for coming. We're gonna make this recording available to anyone who uh, wants to listen to me stumble my way through that again. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be attached to uh, the blog where um, I've written out uh, quite a lot of these feelings in probably uh, a more coherent way. <laughs> so sorry like i said i i don't do these a whole lot so i'm i'm you know not not great at talking but uh this is going to be available on uh the website along with all the slides that you just saw and kind of a lot more information so thank you for coming everyone <laughs>